Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is called angle angle side triangle congruence. So we know angle side angle. Angle side angle is when the S is in the middle. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me put that back. When the S is in the middle, so it would go angle side angle. That means when the when the side is in between the two angles, it's included. Here this goes angle angle and then side. So this this side is not one of the include it's not an included side, so they call it a non-included side. So what is what is the angle angle triangle congruence theorem say about two triangles? Okay, we're gonna prove them to be congruent. Okay, now I didn't catch this till later in my lesson, so this is section A. If I'd have done it right, I'd have put it right here, but I already built this uh, proof right here. Anyways, this is section A, and then so it says, uh, given uh, that A is congruent to D and C is congruent to F, the angles, and the segments BC is congruent to EF, we're going to prove that these triangles are congruent. Okay, so it's going to set up with some statements and reasons right here. Uh, it's called a two-column proof right here. We'll do a couple of flowchart proofs in here also. All right, so notice I put down the first given. I'll put them all three down, and that's what you normally do is put them all three down, but I wanted to do the markings separately. So here's angle A congruent to angle D. So I've marked them right there in blue, and then we'll put the next uh, given down. The next given says that C is congruent to F, so notice those are markings right there. And then the third given right here, the BC congruent to EF, is this side right here and this side right here. So this appears to go angle, angle, and then side. So angle, angle, and side. Okay. So if it was angle, side, angle, it would have been this side right here. This is the included side, but this is a non-included side right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is use this information to prove that the triangles are congruent. Okay. So here we go. So uh, how come I can say that this angle plus this angle plus this angle right here equals 180 degrees? Well, that's just a, whatever name your book calls it. You're this book calls it the triangle sum theorem. All the angles add up to 180 right there, okay? So we're going to do the subtraction property. So what we did is we subtracted um, uh, uh, everything. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm subtracting angle A and I'm subtracting angle C. So it's missing angle C right there. Let's put that in right there, okay? And then uh, here's the rest. Sorry about that, you guys. Okay, so here, this one's for the other triangle, angle blank plus E plus F. So this is going to be angle D plus E plus F, same triangle sum theorem. And then they subtract it again. So here's angle E, so it's going to equal uh, 180 minus D minus F right there. So we're missing the F right there, okay? All right. And then right here it says the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle D. Well, that's because they're congruent right here. Congruent angles have the same measures right here. So that's just definition of congruent angles or definition of, yeah, of congruent angles. Okay, and then uh, that's what this says. And since C equals F right there, that's because C is congruent to F right there. So definition of congruent angles right there. Okay, so now it says uh, E equals 180 minus A minus C. Okay, so remember right here it says E equals 180 minus D minus F. Well, since A equals D right there, and since C equals F, then we substituted in, uh, so this was angle D from right here. And this was angle F from right here. So we just substituted in right there. Okay. And then, um, all right. So this says the transitive property. Okay. So right here, I'm going to, I did them by arrows right here. Let's look at this statement right here. It says E equals 180 minus A minus C right there. Okay. And then we'll take an, and look up here, you guys, right there. It says B equals 180 minus A minus C. So can you see if we go from here up to here right here. Here's 180 minus A minus C. Here's 180 minus A minus C. So this is the transitive property. So that means uh, that angle B equals angle E right there. So we'll put in the angle E right there. Transitive is just a, f a fancy name for substitution right there. Okay. And then now look at the markings right here. So we got uh, this angle, this side, this angle. So this is the included side now between these two angles. Similarly, over here, the included side. So it goes angle, side, angle. Uh, these triangles are congruent right there, okay? So if you can't see that, I just flip-flopped it right there. There's, a, there's the statements and the reasons right there, and there's the picture right there, okay? And then 
Uh, so that leads us to what's called the angle-angle side congruence theorem. And it just says if you have two angles and a non-included side congruent to two angles and a non-included side, we could have done this side down here to this side right here. It's just two angles and a non-included side, not this side right here because this is the included side. That would be angle-side-angle if we use that one right here. So if two angles and a non-included side are congruent to two angles and a non-included side of another triangle, then those triangles are congruent. Okay, now notice it went from A to B to C, so it went from one arc to no arcs to two arcs. So we gotta go one arc, no arc, two arcs. Has to go in the same corresponding order right there. Okay, so let's use the AAS, angle angle side theorem, to prove that the given triangles are congruent. Okay. So, all right, so this is going to be a flow chart proof, okay? So a flow chart proof, um, well, at least we can do is put the givens in. We can put this in and this in right here, and we can put this. We know this goes right here on proof, so let's go ahead and put that information in right there. Okay, and notice I marked uh, the parallel lines with arrows right there, okay? So if we got parallel lines right here cut by a transversal, can you see these alternate interior angles congruent and that's what it says right here alternate interior angles so angle E is congruent to angle A right there okay similarly you guys we got these alternate interior angles angle D congruent to angle B right there so now we can say by angle angle side we're gonna start with this angle 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 side is congruent to angle angle side so they're congruent by angle angle side congruence theorem okay let's try that with this one right here here's another flow chart proof right there and so at least we know what goes here uh, the givens go right here and the proof statement goes right here we don't know the reason yet right here so we don't know if it's angle angle side or angle side angle let's do let's uh, go ahead and fill that information in right there okay when uh, a segment bisects another segment, then we have congruent segments. So it's bisecting AE. So AE, that means that uh, this segment is congruent to this segment right there. So let's go ahead and put that down. Definition of segment bisectors right there. Okay, and then now we got parallel lines. Okay, so parallel lines cut by transversals, you guys. So let's talk about these parallel lines right here. Cut by this transversal, they form equal. What kind of angles are these guys called? They're called corresponding angles. Do you remember that right there? So they're equal corresponding angles. And similarly, we got this parallel line with this parallel line. That makes these angles um, uh, corresponding uh, equal angles also. Okay, so now we can say, okay, how are these triangles congruent? This time it's the included side, angle, side, angle, congruent to angle, side, angle. So the included side, so this one's ASA. Okay, all right, so the triangular regions represent plots of land. We're going to use the angle, angle, side theorem to explain why the same amount of fencing will surround either plot. Okay, so as long as they're congruent, that means their perimeters are congruent, which means that's what fencing is. It's a it's a perimeter thing. So let's go ahead and mark that. It's given that A is congruent to angle D. And then check it out right here. We know that this side right here, this angle right here, and this angle, they're right angles. So those guys are congruent right there. And then uh, they want us to use distance formula, but since we got horizontals and verticals right here, we can say this side is congruent to this side right here. Um, yeah, and they wanted us to do angle, angle, side. So we're not going to do this side because that would make it angle, side, angle right there. Let's do this one congruent to this one, and let's count. One, two, three. So we can just count those squares right there. And so, so they're congruent, so they're um, congruent by angle angle side similarly over here angle angle side so that means the triangles have the same perimeter and and so you need the same amount of fencing let's do that with this one right here okay so same thing let's go ahead and mark those givens right there so it's given that those uh, pairs of angles are congruent so i did these ones in red and these markings in blue right here all right now so we can go um, uh, angle angle and we can count this side right here but let's do distance formula okay now we know that this side is equal to seven right here and this is also equal to seven but let's do distance formula because that's what the book does on on this so let's go ahead and use this distance formula so we subtract the x's square it subtract the y square it, add them and then square root that right there okay so let's do it um, uh, with this side right here congruent to this side that way 
will go angle, angle, side right here, okay? And then this would be angle, angle, side right there. Okay, so here we go, distance formula. All right, and then a little subtraction and then squaring now. So when we square it, we get the square root of 20. So those triangles are congruent, and since they're congruent, then that means they have the same perimeter, so they need the same amount of fencing right there. Okay. So here, each diagram shows two triangles with two congruent angles or sides. So either they have congruent angles or sides. Uh, identify additional pair of corresponding angles or sides such that if the pairs were congruent, the triangles would be proved uh, congruent by angle, angle, side right there. Okay, so here we have, we got to go uh, angle, angle, side. So we can't do this angle right here because this would be the included side and that would be angle, side, angle. So we got to do this angle to make it angle, angle, side right here. So we're going to go uh, angle, angle, side right there. So we want to prove that uh, B is congruent to D right there. Okay, so for on this one, angle, angle, side, we can go uh, blue angle to red angle to this side right here. So it would go blue to red to this side right here, or we can go red to blue to this side right here, the hypotenuse. So red to blue to this side right here. So we can, there's two of them we can do on that one right there. Okay, over here we have two angles. So again, we can do um, uh, blue, red, this side right here. So we'd have to go blue, red, this side right here. Or we can go red, blue, and then this side right here. Red, blue, and then this side right here. So we have two pairs on that one right there. Okay, this one's kind of hard to see because it's a little squished over obtuse triangle. So we can go angle. There's a side right there. So have to pick this angle right here. So angle, angle side right there okay so this is going to have to be this angle and then angle and then that side right there okay all right so b is congruent to f right there angles right there okay here we're going to decide whether there's enough information to determine if the triangles are congruent and if they are congruent explain why okay so this one totally angle angle side right there now I put which triangles are congruent on here you guys so if I did triangle ABC I went from the congruent side to the two angles so we got to go from the congruent side to the two angles so a b c d f e okay so by angle angle side how about this one right here this one's angle side angle because it's the included side right there. So let's do, uh, I think I did triangle ABC. Yeah, ABC. So I went from no markings to the two arcs to the one arc. So we got to go no markings, two arcs to the one arc. So ABC is congruent to EFD by angle side angle because it's the included side. Okay, this one's kind of tricky right here. This one says angle side angle. But this one says angle, angle, side. They have to be the same. If they're not the same, then that you cannot say that they're congruent right there. So one has angle, side, angle markings. The other has angle, angle, side markings. They need to be the same pattern right there. Okay, so here, you guys. Okay, so we can say that this side, because of the reflexive property, BC equals BC. Let's go ahead and mark that right there. Okay, now look. This goes uh, angle, side, side, or side, side, angle right there. And there's no such thing as side, side, angle, or angle, side, side. And what I like to tell my students is, don't make an angle, side, side of yourself, okay? Ha, ha, ha. Good old funny math joke. All right. If you are in my class, I would assign you that. Take care, you guys.